Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. High Flight, John Gillespie McGee. Now, that is some brilliant poetry right there. And it perfectly depicted the dream that I so longed to achieve. And the only place that would even come close to helping achieve this dream was the United States Air Force Academy. People had come far and wide to pursue the skies in the mountain city of Colorado Springs. I had honed both my mental strength and physical with the sole intention to fly. It was 1962 when I finally found my way to the storied halls of the Academy. The first year was full of history lessons, military customs and courtesies, and etiquette. Of course, by the end of the year, we could all recite the Cadet Honor Code in our sleep. We could all name the year the Academy was instated. That legislation was signed on the 1st of April, 1954. We could all name the President who had officially instated the Air Force Academy, former General Dwight Eisenhower. We all knew the date Colorado Springs was selected to house the Academy, 24 June 1955, influenced by none other than Charles Lindbergh. First year was all about mental and physical conditioning. By second year, we'd achieved an uneasy balance between academics and military drill, but third year was my favorite. Don't get me wrong, third year was still physically and academically tough, but for me, it was all about the flying. You see, I knew I wanted to be a fighter pilot, and my dream ride was the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief, the THUD. So in third year, I concentrated on flight training and familiarity with aircraft and avionics. Of course, we also attended survival training, learning to live off the land and evade capture, just in case we were ever forced to bail out over unfriendly territory. These were necessary skills because America was fighting a war in Vietnam. The air campaign for that war was known as Operation Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder was a massive but graduated and ultimately failed bombing campaign intended to put pressure on the NVA and force the North Vietnamese into peace talks. After the academy, I went to UPT en route to the 354th TAC Fighter Squadron, flying, yes, the THUD. Three months in country and I went from being the best fighter pilot in the world to a statistic. We were escorting a flight of weasels to take out an SA-2 site when my luck ran out. A lucky AAA shot took off my starboard wing and forced me to punch. I blacked out on the descent and never felt myself hit the ground. Next thing I knew, an NVA patrol policed me up. I spent the remainder of the war being moved from one POW camp to another. Ultimately, I was released in 73 after the Paris Peace Accords were signed. I came home mostly in one piece, but my back never recovered. Decompression from punching out resulted in permanent nerve damage. I never flew again. So that's my story. Nothing extravagant. I knew what I signed up for when I joined the Academy, as we all did. I'm proud of what I accomplished there and afterward. I'm proud to be an American Airman.